Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with um, today I'm coming at you with a new Let's Play series on Nevin. So I was asked to cover this a little while ago, and but I, being me, I have been very very busy lately um, with partner moving in and everything. So I'm a I'm a busy dragon. I'm a busy gaming dragon. But so I'm finally at it. Uh, let's cover Nevin. I'm very excited to cover this. The art looks really cool. Um, it was uh, the I think that it was originally the game was originally in French because I had to change it to English as soon as the game booted up. But hey, I'm looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and jump right in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up, and let's go. What is your name? Uh, Crisp. No. <laughs> oh, only my partner is probably going to get that reference. It's it, it's fine. It's fine. Um. Eloi. Eloi. Okay. Eloi. Uh, yeah. Eloi. Okay. You're leaving tomorrow? Who knows when we will meet again? One last song? Please? I scratched my chin thoughtfully. It was obvious I wanted to sing, but there was nothing wrong with a bit of teasing. It's much more fun than to accept without hesitation. I don't know. After all, if you really cared about me, I don't think you would have left me with an empty mug for so long. I shake the aforementioned mug in front of my audience as I grossly exaggerate my sorrow. A bit dramatic, but it was part of the job. It looks like it worked. I can hear a few laughs echoing among the members of my band. My old band. Tomorrow at dawn, they will leave toward the east of the kingdom while I will be traveling to the north, the capital city, Frostfang. Our paths will split, and it's impossible to know when we will be together again. The touring bands and musicians aren't known to be predictable in their pathing, especially Ragger's band. Oh, you... In innkeeper, you've heard Long Ears. Fill his mug. We'll pay for him. Long Ears? Really? Not very original. After emptying half a barrel, I feel a bit more playful. Now that his lordship's mug is full, is it possible to hear him sing? I smile while looking at my mug before finally sticking my tongue out at my companions. I look around me, trying to find a small fennec in the crowd and nodding my head when I see her. Leana, could you give me the pleasure of a melody? Sure. Do we go with something joyful? I nod briefly to answer Liana's question as she pulls her tambourine out of a satchel. I then stand up, having always preferred to perform that way, while my partner briefly closes her eyes. She concentrates to make the brand in, she makes the brand in the shape of a circle and prints it on her shoulder grow. She was lucky to wear the brand of Illyria, the goddess of light, one of the most sought after sought after brands among the car among the artists. When her fingers brush the leather of her instrument, they leave behind a trail of blue light, gently vibrating to the rhythm she begins to create. Each new note launches a wave which collides with the others, the colors varying and changing between the different waves. I can't help but be jealous. Being the only member of the band who hasn't yet received his brand tends to do that to you. I'm 22 and it's a bit late to be branded. Most people had theirs during their teenage years. I know that it will eventually, eventually appear that one of the twelve gods will choose me. Everyone gets a brand sooner or later. The patience had never been my strong suit and it was starting to really to be a really long wait. But it'll be worth it. Not knowing which god would choose me was frustrating. I could get the light or air brand, which would be perfect for my musical performances, or I could get the war brand, and that would be useless to me. But I don't have time to think about it any longer. I have an audience to satisfy and a song to perform. After letting Liana, after letting Liana play for a while, I open my jaw wide and the lyrics come out in rhythm with her music. As far as I can remember, I've always loved being in front of a crowd. Dancing, singing, or just making people laugh was my own little passion. Not wanting to brag, but I'm good at it. Really good. I know how to hypnotize my audience and how to attract attention. I make up for my small size with boundless energy, bouncing around like the white rabbit I am. Accompanying Liana's, accompanying Liana's music, I start to sing a drinking song. It was only appropriate given our location. Each pause is in the melody is the occasional. Each pause in the melody is the occasion to take a sip and to have fun with the crowd. I find myself quickly standing on a table, making large gestures and pointing at my companions when it is their turn to empty their mug, which they obviously do without question. One after another, their voices accompany mine, which makes me smile even more. It was my last night with these people, and I fully intended to enjoy the moment until my voice would break. And now, raise your mug and drink, drink, drink! As requested by the song, I empty my mug in one gulp, clicking my tongue when it's done and bowing in front of my audience. As I get up, I stick my tongue out at those who are still looking at me, and I wink at them as I come down to the table. You know, you know, Eloi, I think I will never get tired of hearing you sing. Ragor, I was afraid I wouldn't see you again until tomorrow morning. And missing the party? Never. Plus, I wanted to see you, to talk a bit in private. 
If you don't mind leaving your audience, of course. One second, y'all. Water time. Hmm. This game is, uh, very musical. I like it. I take a moment to look at the crowd and see that they are very busy emptying their mugs and loudly chattering with each other. I believe they can survive without me for a few minutes. As if my crowd wanted to contradict me, the sound of shattered glass reaches my ears, making me wince briefly. Well, I hoped they could survive without me for a few minutes. I'm starting to wonder what you'll do when I'll, when I'll be gone. Ragger answers me with a laugh, obviously not sharing my concerns. He then beckons me to follow him, and we both go and sit at the small, secluded table away from the noise. The Labrador sighs heavily as he sits, losing his gaze in mine, which causes me to squirm uncomfortably in my seat. Ragger's eyes had always made me feel as if they were piercing straight through my head, as if he always knew what I was thinking, even when I tried to hide it. So, Eloise, are you sure you're ready for tomorrow? As ready as I can be. I know the road, although I'm usually although usually I'm with you. Plus, it's only a two-day trip. I should be okay. That's precisely what worries me. It's been a long time since you were alone, and the last time. Ragger, no, it's not the same situation. I just want to make sure. I said no. I had absolutely no intention to talk about what happened three years ago. No, it's locked up in my head and we don't need to talk about that again. I stare at Ragger, as seriously as I can, sighing when I see the Labrador looking away. I just want to check one last time. Are you really sure you want to go? You know, we always love to have you at our sides. I know this is a golden opportunity and I'm proud that you're becoming independent after all. After all, it's the best way to improve yourself. It doesn't mean I'm happy to see you leave. I would love to stay with the band, Aragor, but... But to be a royal bard? This is an opportunity I have to take, unless you don't think I can win. I give him a playful look, curious to see his reaction. Don't be ridiculous. You know how I feel about your talents. Unless you get yourself unless you get yourself into another one of those silly situations you know so well, you should win this tournament easily. I don't see what you... Do I really have to remind you what happened in Kelt? Uh, how would I have known I wasn't? he was engaged? Or in Tenarian. I told you it was an accident. Mermian. All right, all right, I get it. I promise not to slip in any other hand any other bed but mine by the end of the contest. How does that sound to you? I guess that's all I can hope for. Seriously, though, Eloi, try not to create any diplomatic incidents, okay? I mumble and shrug it as an answer. Sure, there had been a few incidents before, but I was perfectly capable of controlling myself. He makes me look like a bigger pervert than I am. There's a moment of silence between us, but that doesn't bother me. We've known each other long enough that we've been accustomed to, these, to those moments. When I look up to him again, I see a smile stretching his chops, and I feel like joining him. Hey, Ragger? Yeah? I, uh, just, uh, I just want to thank you. Thank me? Why? For everything you've done, for welcoming me into the band. I don't think I've told you before, so I really wanted to do it before I left. I don't know where I would be if you hadn't found me, and... I'm interrupted by Ragger's big paw resting on my head, stroking, stroking me gently between the ears. Labrador gives me a reassuring look, his gaze in mine, and I can feel tears forming in my eyes. Shit, I promised, I promised to myself I wouldn't cry. Get yourself together, Eloi. You don't have to say it. Having you with us has been a pleasure. A bit complicated at first, I'm not going to lie to you. You caused a few surprises, but it was a pleasure nonetheless. The best way to thank me is to go to Frostfang, impress the kings, and, and become the court bard. Make us proud, Eloi. That's all I ask of you. He withdraws his paw before smiling at me. I feel my cheeks flush under my fur. I was going to miss Ragger once I was gone. I have no doubts about that. That lovely little moment quickly stops when I see Ragger's smile widen even more. His white fangs now almost entirely revealed under his chops. Oh no, he was he always makes that face when he's about to embarrass me. Now if you really want if you really want to make me happy, Ragger. You can always find a sweet boyfriend there. Something lasting, you know. Ragger, please. I shrivel up in my seat, getting lower and lower as I try to hide behind the table. This is not the first time Ragger has brought up the brought up the subject. I know exactly where he plans to go next, and I really don't want to talk about it. Like you know, maybe even thinking about adopting kids. Hmm? I could teach them not to be like their father. Please, Ragger, stop it! I'm way too young to think about that, and I don't want to have kids anyway. I, I value my freedom. And who knows, it could be an opportunity for me to settle down somewhere once and for all. It could be Grandpa Ragger, or... Alright, it's time to get out of here. I need a subtle escape. Would you look at that? It's getting pretty late. I think it's time to go to sleep. I have a long road ahead of me. Very subtle, Eloise. Very subtle. I get up quickly so that the Labrador doesn't have the time to convince me to stay. But I'm, in but I'm interrupted by his laugh. 
He obviously got what he wanted. It was too late to hide my embarrassment. Before you go to sleep, Erwin wants to see you. Erwin? Do you know why? I believe he has a gift for you. Erwin is one of the caravan's guards responsible for our protection during the tours. We get along quite well, but he didn't strike me as the kind of guy to give parting gifts. He's upstairs, so you'll run into him anyway. I'll see what he wants from me. Good night, Ragger, and try to keep in touch with me, okay? I promise you will see each other soon enough. Goodbye, Eloise, and good luck. With one last look, I finally leave the Labrador behind me. It's kind of strange. Both excited and sad about this separation. After all, I could become a royal bard. It was an opportunity not to be missed. Even more so because I was sure I was good enough to win that tournament. But at the same time, I've known Ragger, Erwin, and the rest of the band for the past three years. Three years without being alone, never having to think about my problems. I just had to enjoy the moment. Do I really want to leave after all? Nobody can blame me for staying with my family, right? I'm living a good life here with them. But they are heading east, and I can't follow them. There's no way I'm going back there. No. I've made my decision. It's hard to leave this comfortable life, but I have to. After all, I'm only going to be alone during the trip. I have no doubt that once I'm in Frostfang, I'll be surrounded by a lot of good people. It's the capital city, after all. It must be bursting with life. I shake my head before heading up the stairs. Erwin is waiting for me, after all. And I have to admit that I'm quite curious as to what he wants to give me. Once upstairs, I can see the wolf leaning against the wall, watching me with a dead serious stare. Ah. Erwin. It took you a long time to come. Ragger just told me you wanted to see me, so you have a present for me? I know you love me deep- I know you love me deep down. Erwin grunts and rolls his eyes. Look at that, can I be right? I can always decide not to give you anything, you know, especially if that's the only reason you came to see me. Don't be like that, you're my favorite guard, you know. I would have come to say goodbye anyway, the gift is just the icing on the cake. I give the- I give the wolf a big smile, making myself as charming as possible. Being cute is one of the biggest perks, and I've always used that to my- used that to take advantage. I sure hope you would. Do you know how sad a wolf can get when left alone? Before I have time to react, Ern grabs me by the hips to hug me tightly. For one brief moment, I think about resisting, but finally I hug him back. This is the last time he can do this before a while. So might as well let him enjoy. Plus, I'm not going to complain. I get to be snuggled up against the muscular chest of a big, of a big wolf after all. Erwin and I had a few dates together, never anything serious. We quickly came to the conclusion that being friends with benefits was the best situation for both of us. So this kind of closeness was not uncommon between us. In fact, it was even really welcome at the moment. I also hope you'll miss me once you get to the big city. Won't you forget your favorite? Won't you forget your favorite guard? I'll make an effort to try to remember you. It might be difficult though. After all, I'll be at the royal court. I'm sure there are plenty of other guards just as attractive as you. Now, if I had anything to help me remember, then it would certainly be much easier to think about you. I get it. Okay, you want your present. I stick my tongue out playfully. He knows I'm not patient, and the thought of receiving a gift doesn't help in that regard. Alright. Alright, y'all, last three and a half, three minutes and thirty seconds. Let's make it count. He pushes me away before grabbing his belt, undoing it in front of me. I can't help but chuckle at his little show. Ooh, that kind of gift. You could at least wait until we're in the bedroom. I'm not sure everyone would like to stumble upon that kind of performance. What? What are you Oh! I see the wolf's ears drop instantly as he blushes slightly. I don't get to embarrass him often enough, and I was glad I did. That was quite the sight. Try not to think with your cock, will you? You can understand why I could be confused. Why are you taking your belt off exactly? Because you're going to need it. Here, it's for you. He hands me his belt, which still has the scabbard attached to it, and a sword sheathed inside. I look briefly at his wide smile, trying to understand why he's so proud of himself. Hmm, thank you? I always appreciate a gift, but you forgot your sword. You're going to need it, and I've got plenty of weapons, so don't worry about me. Look at the blade dubiously, giving Erwin the exact same look. You know I don't like weapons, don't you? And I'm not particularly good with a sword anyway. That was never my thing. You will take it. It's non-negotiable. Erwin's tone is suddenly much more serious. Strange. He never talks to me like that, usually. Why does he want me to have a weapon so badly? You're going to be all alone on the road, and you don't even have a brand to defend yourself. There's no way you're leaving like that. So, you take that sword, you keep it at your side, and if need be, you use it. I taught you the basics so you can fight. I sincerely hope you don't have to, but I will not let you go without a means to defend yourself. That is all. I grumble slightly and end up putting on the belt, trying it to my, tying it to my waist. Obviously, it's not my size, so I have to tighten it to the maximum, and even then, I feel like it doesn't fit perfectly. I feel absolutely ridiculous wearing this. I hope you're aware of that. You are exaggerating. If you weren't so cute, you would almost be impressive. 
Almost. Erwin smiles, showing his fangs as he briefly raises his eyebrows. I can't help but sigh. Subtlety has never been his strength when it came to seduction. It's not with a... It's not with a bit of a flirt that you're going to improve how I see myself. I know exactly what I look like. Maybe, but that could be... But that could win... But that could win... Win me my... But that could win me my parting gift, right? Oh, so there was indeed another reason you took your belt off then. And there I was, believing your thoughts were pure for once. Well, I'm not going to be able to appreciate that fine wiggling ass of yours for a while. That's what was keeping me walking during our trips. Let me have it one last time. You're a wordsmith, Aaron, a true gentleman. It doesn't mean that you ref that you refuse my offer. Touche. I'm obviously never against having a little fun, especially with someone so physically pleasing. But I just promised to Ragger that I was not that I would not sleep with anyone until the end of the contest. Plus, I really need a bit of sleep since I'm gonna walk a lot tomorrow. On the other hand, the likelihood of initiating a diplomatic incident while sleeping with Erwin is pretty low. Besides, everyone knows we sleep better after a bit of fun, right? Uh, what to do? Um, I think I'm gonna pause it right there, actually. Uh, y'all, uh, let me know what I need to do in the comments. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I think I know which option I'm going to be going with, but we're gonna save it for there. We're gonna save it for there. Alarm chan's about to go off, but anyway, y'all... Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.